Just recently, The Abyss finally made its way to Blu-ray and 4K UHD. After many years of pestering, James Cameron decided to dedicate some time to publish his small back catalogue of films in HD and 4K, along with Aliens and True Lies. The Abyss is no stranger to HD, it made its way to streaming a number of years back, and was available on Netflix, and has popped up on regular TV, sometimes in its theatrical or extended cut form, with adjustments to its aspect ratio. But the chance to actually own the film has been impossible since the days of VHS, Laserdisc and DVD. It still baffles me it's taken this long. I know 20th Century Fox have been eager to put these titles out for years, and plans were afoot with special features being produced, and a number of announcements were made that it was happening, even from James Cameron. There have clearly been some issues between Cameron and the studio, with Cameron spending the past 15 years dedicating his time to Avatar and its sequels. This has left him unable to focus on his back catalogue and approve these new transfers. Cameron was even pestered online by other filmmakers such as Ryan Reynolds and Ryan Johnson, so he was fully aware people were desperate to see his films on disc or streaming, as The Abyss and True Lies were for the majority stuck in the world of standard definition. Being based in the UK, I had to import this disc as it's no longer coming out in the UK due to the BBFC having an issue with the rat trying to breathe underwater and wanted trims made for a fresh rating, but James Cameron refused to cut it, resulting in it being cancelled. The Abyss back in 1989 didn't really set the world alight. It was an expensive film costing around $45 million and made $90 million worldwide, which is good numbers at the box office but having produced The Terminator and Aliens, both on smaller budgets, they made a bigger profit, whereas The Abyss less so. It also landed with a number of other films dealing with a similar subject, with Leviathan, Deep Star 6, Lords of the Deep and The Evil Below but also a bloated summer season of sequels in 1989 and with Batman dominating the box office. The film was affected with production problems, the big challenges of shooting underwater, actors getting stressed with James Cameron's way of directing and having to film difficult scenes. It ended up being an unpleasant experience for many on the production. The reviews for its theatrical cut didn't really excite the critics. Many said it looked incredible and applauded the visual effects and direction, but were less thrilled by the story, saying the payoff was silly, saying it was pretentious, it left many questions unanswered, others felt it was tedious, bloated, overlong, and Cameron was more excited by the machinery than people. Despite its mixed reviews, it was nominated for four Academy Awards, and won for Best Visual Effects thanks to the innovation of CGI, though the majority of the film would make use of miniature effects that stand up extremely well today. Rumours circulated in the press that sequences were cut from the film's third act. Cameron held Final Cut, provided that the film met a running time of roughly 2 hours and 15 minutes, at the request of 20th Century Fox. In cutting the film down, Cameron said, When I cut the film together, things that read well on paper, on a conceptual level, didn't necessarily translate to the screen as well. I felt I was losing something by breaking my focus. Breaking the story's focus and coming off the main characters was a far greater detriment to the film than what was gained. The film keeps the same message intact at a thematic level, not at a really overt level, by working in a symbolic way. Cameron decided to remove the message about nuclear disarmament and the screen time of the aliens aka the NTIs, who were concerned with the humans fighting each other and threatened to wipe us out with a massive ocean wave to teach us a lesson. But fans of The Abyss did get to see the original cut in 1993 with the new Laserdisc Special Edition, thanks to the success of Cameron's T2 Judgment Day in 1991. Lightstorm Entertainment secured a five-year financing deal at $500 million with 20th Century Fox. The contract allocated roughly half a million dollars of the amount to complete The Abyss, as the scenes for the finale featuring the aliens and the ocean wave were incomplete. ILM was commissioned to finish the work they had started three years earlier, with many of the same people who had worked on it originally. The CGI tools developed for T2 allowed ILM to complete the tidal wave sequence, as well as correcting flaws in rendering for all the other work done for the film. The press were keen to cover this new release, with Cameron demonstrating the film and the technology of Laserdisc, and it was covered by Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert on their movie show, with Siskel singing its praise. In the new version, we see them warn the world to clean up its nuclear act. The aliens create a massive tidal wave that threatens to wipe out mankind. Okay, that's enough. I get the point. In the director's cut of The Abyss, that sequence lasts two and a half minutes and was cut for time in the original because it didn't test well. But frankly, I think the movie needs that explanation. It adds weight to now a nearly three-hour film that at times is in danger of becoming more of a special effects exercise than a human story. The Abyss has been re-released in theaters in New York and Los Angeles, and now this new version has been placed on a fantastic new laser disc that is the first laser disc project of George Lucas's THX video division. It's as good a transfer as I've ever seen. I suggest you check it out 
because the abyss has been improved. So how does this new 4K transfer compare to the old HD transfer, but also the Laserdisc and DVD? As with all new remasters, colours change as filmmakers want to update their movies and apply modern noise reduction techniques to spice up their old work. The past number of months, there's been a lot of talk of James Cameron making use of the New Zealand-based production services of Park Road, which had worked on many of the big features such as the Hobbit trilogy and Peter Jackson's Beatles documentary Now and Then. The company had developed new tools to remaster movies, making use of AI to improve an image and reduce noise. Unwanted elements of a picture such as damage and in the case of the Cameron movies, the tools have been aggressively applied in some areas, with True Lies being the biggest offender, which I will explore in another video. Boy, I remember the first time I got shot out of a cannon. After reading all the complaints and looking at the screen grabs on social media, I was concerned but also aware of those who were way over dramatic with their criticisms. I understood the fans' worries as I was like many been waiting for Cameron's movies in 4K for a long time. Once I started watching The Abyss, I was honestly really impressed with the image. It's a lot brighter in its presentation in areas, with the highlights being pushed up a notch, so the darkness of the seabed, you can see a lot more going on. The blues are a tad more teal in some scenes, but the shift is not as excessive from its original look, so the film doesn't look radically different for it to be obvious. I think the changes are subtle enough to not ruin the integrity of the original photography. There are some obvious issues with the effects produced for the extended cut, as we see the alien spacecraft rise out of the sea and lifting the warships up in the process. It looks like an upscaled standard definition image, which is odd considering everything else looks pretty good during this sequence. There is a certain level of grain that is retained from the Super 35mm print. Of course a lot of grain has been scrubbed out to make the film look more clean and one could argue look more modern, which is often seen as a big no-no for those who appreciate film restoration and preservation. As the abyss was shot in a specific film format and then presented in 235 to 1, you have an image that has been cropped to fit that aspect ratio, so you will naturally have more of a grainy image. Cameron would use this format to make it easier for TV broadcast, but also easier for computer effects work. So I get why the image has been cleaned up to reduce the increased amount of grain. There is the odd shot where some of the actors' faces look a tad too smooth, but for 90% of the remaster, you can see the detail on their skin so everything looks very natural. James Cameron is no stranger to adjusting his movies for home video releases. He has been fiddling with his movies since the days of Laserdisc. I was not surprised he again was going to adjust the look of his back catalogue. Thankfully for these new remasters, he hasn't done a George Lucas and made fixes to the visual effects. The CGI and optical effects still look like they're from 1989, and thankfully Cameron left in the blooper during the extended cut, where the people at the beach run away from the massive wave, and you can see someone pull down a guy's shorts. For the sound department, it comes with a new Dolby Atmos mix, which does sound fantastic. But also for those who like the original sound mixes, it offers a DTS stereo mix, which is often handy when you have a sound bar. Playing a full surround sound mix is always problematic. You will always end up adjusting the volume because it's too loud or too quiet. So a solid stereo track is always welcome. For the new material, we have two featurettes, one with a conversation with Cameron called Deep Dive, where he reminisces about his school years and being interested in science, and the challenges of making The Abyss, which is around 32 minutes long in length, and one on the legacy of the film, with interviews with Galen Hurd, John Landau and the effects artists, and of course Cameron, as they explore its production and how it has stood the test of time. This runs for about 24 minutes. Both new featurettes are very interesting. Of course, it brings over the old one hour long making of produced for the Laserdisc, which is still really good. Growing up, I was never really a huge fan of The Abyss. I felt it was too long and lacked the action I'd come to expect from James Cameron, as I saw this film way after Terminator 1 and 2 and Aliens, so The Abyss was a big shift, but I started to appreciate it a lot more in my later years. I had the Laserdisc box set, which had laser rot, so that got flung in the bin, so I picked up the remastered version from 1996, which had a new swanky Dolby Digital track, but never bothered to pick up the DVD Special Edition, down to it not being 16x9, and it just recycled the Laserdisc content, so sitting down to watch this new 4K remaster, this was the first time in a number of years I've watched the extended cut, and despite it being nearly three hours long, it didn't feel like a slog. The pace worked a treat, the ending is still a bit cheesy with its message, and even if it never featured aliens in it, I still think it would have worked as a solid Cold War thriller.
it's great to finally have the Abyss on Blu-ray and 4K. It's always a shame when the remastering process gets a bit excessive. Trying to make an old movie look modern is always a bit puzzling to me. Most often the folk who buy these old titles are fans and just want to see their favourite movies in the best possible resolution, so it matches the original intent. Thankfully the Abyss doesn't go too crazy and maintains its original look, with a few tweaks that may annoy some, but for me, not being totally dedicated and passionate about the film since its release, and only years later I appreciated its story, direction and ambition, so my memory with how the film should look is a little fuzzy. But I personally think it's a solid presentation that is worth adding to your collection. It's definitely the most impressive film on a technical level from 1989, and with it being 35 years old, I'm not surprised it stood up to the test of time. I hope you enjoyed the video, don't forget to click the like button and hit the bell to be notified of my latest reviews. Big thanks to my patrons and YouTube members for supporting the channel. If you want to get involved and gain access to exclusive videos and take part in Q&As, follow the link below.